Lesson 58, Taking the Low Place. In today's lesson, we find Jesus dining with some Pharisees and challenging them to take the humble place. He also shows the importance of serving for future rewards in heaven and not just here on earth. Jesus will also point out the importance of accepting God's invitation while it is available. Jesus is dining in the home of one of the ruling Pharisees and takes notice of a man with a sickness of dropsy. It appears the Pharisees were looking for an occasion to accuse Jesus for doing wrong. As it was the Sabbath day and Jesus could see the man needed to be healed, he first asked the Pharisees if it was lawful to heal on the Sabbath, but they kept quiet. Jesus then healed the man and asked the Pharisees another question about the Sabbath. He said to them, If your donkey or ox falls into a pit on the Sabbath, which one of you would not rescue the animal on the Sabbath? A donkey or an ox was an important investment, and not helping the animal immediately could cost its life and a large money loss to its owner. No one was prepared to make such a loss even if it meant pulling the animal out of the pit on the Sabbath day. While these men were trying to lay a trap for Jesus, he in fact trapped them, for if they said they would be willing to rescue an animal on the Sabbath day, then they would have to admit that it was okay to release a man from the bondage of disease on the Sabbath as well. Jesus said to those at the dinner table that it was important when attending a feast to seek the low place and not just the high place of honor. That way the host will have a chance to exalt you rather than having to humble you and move you from the better seat to a lower seat. Jesus was telling this story to teach the need for humility while he sat at a dinner with a group of proud men who loved honor and praise. How true it is that we see men seeking a place of honor, but when men exalt themselves, Jesus said they would be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. It is wise then to always seek the low place and let others do the exalting. Jesus also pointed out to the Pharisees that when having a dinner, they should not just invite their friends and family or rich neighbors who were able to repay the kindness, but they should invite the poor, the maimed, the lame and the blind, since they could not repay. The principle taught to us here is not to do good only so we can have some immediate advantage, but rather to do good that will last into eternity. Jesus points out that when we serve the interests of God and others by faith, that is not looking for our reward now, but later in heaven that we shall be rewarded at the time of the resurrection of the just. Our religious good deeds are not intended to make us look good in the sight of men, but in genuine love for God and with a view to our eternal rewards in heaven. Now Jesus also tells the Pharisees a story about a dinner. It is interesting to notice how Jesus uses illustrations to teach that relate to the immediate circumstances that others could understand and relate to. While Jesus was a dinner guest in another's home, he speaks of another dinner and invited guest. In this story, those who are invited to dinner all decline the invitation because of other business they had to attend to. They clearly thought their own business was more important than honoring the man who invited them for dinner. It was a show of pride that said, your dinner invitation is not as important as my own affairs. The host sent servants to collect as many guests as could be found in the highways and byways to come and enjoy his feast. But he said he would never allow those wicked men who refused his invitation to ever taste his dinner. Though the Pharisees likely did not understand the implications of this story, it was in fact directed at them and others like them, who are invited by God to feast with God's Son, and to bid honor to the one God delights in. When pride of religious position causes men to refuse God's invitation to come and dine, which is a picture of salvation, then God will cast them out. It takes humility to recognize our need of salvation and to come to Jesus in faith, and those who refuse the invitation provoke God's wrath 
and will be punished for their obstinate pride and rebellion. The scene then changes and we find Jesus being followed by a large crowd of followers. Jesus turns to the crowd to speak to them about the high cost of discipleship. He explains to them that to follow him means they must make him more important than even their families. He said they too must be willing to carry a cross, meaning they must be ready to die. They must be willing to die to their own ambitions, to their own family's influence, to their comforts and ease in this world, and to be ready to even give up their lives if necessary to represent Christ and make the gospel known. Jesus said, in both building and in war, prior plans need to be made to ensure that the efforts and commitment were enough to complete the task. When following Jesus, we must understand that it will cost us everything, and so we must be willing to give up all for him. He then says that salt that loses its flavor is not good for anything but to be cast out. This means those who can only go part way for Christ and then turn back are useless to the kingdom of God. I hope you have counted the cost of following Jesus and are prepared to forsake all to be his disciples. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Luke chapter 14 verse 33